Hi, my name is Kevin Meyer. I'm a spray paint artist in New York City and I've been painting art in New York City since the late 80s. My mother always told me I was creative. She told me a story one time that I used to get dressed up in a suit and tie and get up on a chair and cook my own breakfast. You know, I, when I was eight years old, I used to, instead of, you know, I would play with regular kids, you know, football and all that stuff, but then I would also be like, okay, let's make a movie. <laughs> and we would record ourselves doing the nightly uh, broadcast news and with, we would have the person's mother in the background typing on the typing because that's how the nightly use, news used to be. I was hanging out with my friend. We're hanging out in our fort. You know, we're kids. It was a gallon of paint. I'm like, oh, let's paint. I don't know how to paint. I'm just like, let's paint. What helps me do this stuff is um, confidence. Not that I have confidence, I don't, but it's like, it's good to be around, that's why I like New York so much. It's good to be around people that celebrate people that do art or do this. There's eight million dreamers in New York City and all their energy just oozes out in the streets, especially the artists. When I walk around New York City, I just see it as one big giant art gallery. Let me show you what I mean. I want to bring you guys to uh, Freeman Alley. It's very unique for New York City. I want to tell you why. So what's different about Freeman Alley than the other walls in New York City, the other walls in New York City might have some murals or a graffiti or some stickers, but here all the street artists are all on these two walls all together and they're all on top of each other and it kind of makes it this own entity. This is a uh, graffiti artist. This is an artist that was from Colombia. I met him the other day. He, he hand paints it on. Sometimes you have to look up. So this is reminding us to look up because in New York you have to look up sometimes. There's all kinds of hidden things around like this is an actual sculpture. There's another sculpture right here. You got to look up a little bit. Look at how he used these signs as the sculpture. I love that. So this artist was genius enough to uh, put a little two feet here and it says stand here and then you can take your picture. Be careful if you come to Freeman Alley, watch that. I trip on that all the time. But here's some uh, musicians for you right here. So here's an artist celebrating a musician. This uh, cartoon face right here, I love that. That just makes me happy with the heart. There's nothing but stickers on this door for some reason. If you're reading this, I hope something great happens to you. There you go, everybody. I hope something great happens to you. What I do is I try to reminisce and try to uh, romanticize New York City in my art pieces. So it might be a certain time or a certain vibe that I feel from New York and I kind of condense it into an art piece and project my feeling towards New York in my artwork. So Freeman Alley kind of is a good example of where my head's at when I'm painting. I started uh, spray painting and doing art in the city in the late 80s. My sister lived in uh, Greenwich Village on Bleecker Street. Those four corners were like the hub of New York City because Times Square was kind of uh, a little dangerous to be. I would come downstairs from my sister's uh, uh, apartment to be like William Defoe eating lunch there and stuff like that. He's super cool. I was always there almost every day just kind of filming and, and going to art galleries and it would just open my mind up. One day there was these people spray painting out in front of her house and they were doing spray paint art that's uh, originated in Mexico City in the 80s by Ruben Sadat and he was a street artist who used like pots and pans and fire and paper and spray paint to get his effect and it was he just made it up and because I was doing three-dimensional art and going to all these galleries I saw this and I was like oh wow look at this three-dimensional planet they made with this pot and they did it so quick and I was like oh that's something then I started doing spray paint art since then how I made this was a garbage can lid so this planet is made with like paper and spray paint and then you kind of shadow it a little bit put the can on top and then all the background which looks like kind of nebulas, or at least I was trying to get it to look like nebulas, is all spray paint. And then the moon guy is done with spray paint and markers. So through the years, people uh, evolved with spray paint art in New York City. They went from planets and stuff, and then the, some people started adding buildings. I took to the, that as well, because uh, my father was an operating engineer in New York City. He worked on the original World Trade Center. I was on a lot of the buildings, and it's a different perspective to be way up high and have no walls or windows or doors, so just the wind coming through. When I watch people paint it, it's just, it's amazing. It's very difficult. You have to really work and practice a lot to kind of actually get these effects. There's little subtle things to put in if the paint's not dry at the right time. That's why we blow fire, because sometimes you have to kind of 
dry the painting because you're doing it so fast, much more harder than, than, than you think. So it takes a lot of a, a learning curve to kind of figure that out. Actually, I'm the first artist ever to get into a Soho art gallery. So when I got in CJ Yao Gallery, um, it just took off like wildfire because no one ever saw this type of painting. It's still underground, it's, it's big on the internet, but it really hasn't been um, sought after as a real art form, especially a gallery art form. So I finally was getting to a book I was working on this summer, I had to get done this summer, and I was like, I don't wanna go on any galleries, I don't wanna do nothing. I dropped all my projects because I'm doing this uh, book. I'm like, nothing's gonna stop me, I'm gonna get it done. And I was halfway through it, and then David called at 114 West 71st Street Arts, and he's like, come on in, and then this happened. Here's some of my art pieces, kind of romanticizing what I feel about New York. This is kind of what I see. I love the walls in New York that have like no parking sign and there's like little stickers on it with some graffiti. I just love that. I love like the, the electrical boxes and all the wires and stuff. Press a button right here. This one's like the industrial lights that they have and a little interactive piece right here. So this romanticizes the music scene in the 80s like CBGBs and the Ramones and the Sex Pistols. Deborah Harry was kind of the queen of that time in New York, so she's at the helm of the painting. The main reason why I was asked to be in this gallery was this wall right here. So uh, David and Jacob, the owners of the gallery, they wanted to have artists to come here. It was a white wall, but they wanted to make it look a little bit like a New York wall. They wanted to be brown, and they wanted to kind of have stickers on there and have artists come and put all their art on here. So my concept was, Let's, let me do an 80s wall, how a wall would look back in the 80s. Here's the old poster bills, the Rolling Stones. This is actually the actual posters in, in, on, real, on the streets in New York that I ripped down. This is the Planet of Apes because at the end of the movie, you saw the Statue of Liberty in the water. That's actually New York City. So I wanted to put that in there for an old retro look. Here's the uh, Ramones designed to make it look like the brick wall, post no bills. So this looks like a real wall. This was white and now it kind of looks like an outdoor wall. There's uh, the spray paint art that I do with the floating uh, planets and the uh, Empire State Building with some graffiti. There's the Iggy Pop, and then we have the, uh, the sign here, no parking with some graffiti over it. So I just wanted to make a wall so it could be an interactive wall for artists to come and interact on and also participants to come and uh, you know look at it and, and play with this electrical box and, you know, be a part of it. Here's another painting I did. This is kind of pop art. I do also pop art paintings. Here's another painting. This is uh, all positive words. I usually put lots of positive words in my paintings and hidden meanings. Uh, I'm a big believer in positive thinking. Peace. That's why I love New York because there's so much positive energy here and there's so many different people and it doesn't even have to be music and it doesn't even have to be art. It just has to be somebody wearing orange sneakers. Or we just saw a guy walk here with a big, long, white beard and I was complimenting on I was like, that's amazing. So anything could be inspiring if you're in the right state of mind to look for it.